The rehab for proximal hamstring tendinopathy can be broken up into three different phases. For the first phase, our focus is on the irritated tendon and to start introducing a little bit of load to the tendon. Once tolerated, then we want to start to build up the capacity of the tendon while keeping the hip in neutral. And then finally, we want to start building up the tolerance of the tendon to a variety of different movements, typically by loading more into hip flexion. So in this video, we'll go over some exercises for each one of those phases for proximal hamstring tendinopathy. Starting with loading for an irritated tendon. For some cases, this stage is actually optional, but for a tendon that isn't tolerating much load, this is a great starting place to start building up some tolerance to loading, as well as building up some confidence to actually contracting those hamstring muscles. Typically, this phase has a lot of isometric contractions, which just means that we're going to contract the hamstring muscle without moving either the knee or the hip joint. For the first exercise, start by lying on your stomach, and then from this position, bend the knee to lift the foot up off the ground, and we want to hold this for 30 to 45 seconds. We can actually play with how high we lift up the foot to see if there's a position that's better tolerated, but ideally, we're just trying to contract the hamstrings just a little bit, and then we want to repeat this for four to five repetitions. We can then increase the challenge of this exercise by starting in a quadruped position with our hands underneath our shoulders and our knees underneath our hips. And then from this position, lift the leg up off the ground, again, holding for 30 to 45 seconds. When we're in this position, we can actually challenge different parts of the hamstring by either rotating our foot out or rotating our foot in, which will just stress different parts of that hamstring muscle Again, we're just trying to hold for 30 to 45 seconds and then repeat again for three to five repetitions. And then finally progressing to a long lever bridge, which will be the most challenging exercise for the hamstrings. The closer your heels are to you, the easier it'll be. What we wanna do is have our heels dug into the ground and then lift our hips up and then hold this position. We wanna to try to get full extension if we can and then hold this position for 30 to 45 seconds. To progress, we can put our heels out a little bit further and then repeat the same thing. And then again, going out as far as we can and then holding. Additionally, we can make this a little bit more challenging by switching to a single leg variation. Again, pushing the heel into the ground and then lifting the hips up and then holding and then back down, and then progressing again, having the heel out further, and then holding that position again. Once the tendon is able to tolerate some load and we gain confidence with contracting the hamstring muscles, then we can progress the exercises to start incorporating some movement. Typically, flexion of the hip is a provocative movement for those with proximal hamstring tendinopathy. So in this stage, we're going to keep the hip in neutral and only move the knee to start building up the strength of the hamstring muscles. For the first loading exercise here, we'll start by lying on our stomach. We'll use an exercise band wrapped around the ankles, but we can also use an ankle weight as well. And then from this position, my left leg is gonna serve as my anchor. I'm going to slowly flex the knee to bring my heel up towards me, and then slowly back down. When we do this, we actually wanna focus on time under tension if we can. So we wanna perform these slowly. So it'd be a three to four second contraction up, and then a three to four second contraction slowly back down to the ground. For the next exercise, we'll need either a towel or a furniture slider to put underneath our heels. And then from this position, we're going to bridge up and then slowly slide our heels away from us as far as we can go. And then rest the hip back down on the ground, come back to that original starting position, bridge up, and then slowly slide the heels away from us. Again, we wanna perform these slowly, so it's a slow contraction over three to four seconds if we can. If we can't make it out all the way, that's okay. We could just go as far as we can go and then just drop the hip and then work towards gradually getting out as far as we can go. These can also be progressed to a single leg variation, although they get much more challenging. So everything stays the same, except now we're going to bridge up in a single leg and then slowly slide that heel out as far as we can go, and then drop the hips back down, come back up, bridge, and then slowly slide out again as far as we can go. The final progression is to start loading the hamstring in hip flexion, and this is actually a really important phase because typically hip flexion is a provocative movement for proximal hamstring tendinopathy, so we wanna make sure that we're building up the tolerance of the hamstring tendon 
to that hip flexion. And there's a variety of different exercises that we can use here, but we're just looking for the exercise to start with and then gradually build up from there. To start loading the hip in more hamstring flexion, we can go back to the long lever bridge, but this time we're going to elevate our feet either on a chair or some sort of ottoman. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna push our heels down, lift the hips up as high as we can go to get that full extension in through the hip, and then slowly back down to the ground. So contracting, pushing the heels down, and then back up. Again, we can play with how much hip flexion we have by bringing our heels closer to us, and then bridging up, and then slowly back down, or having our heels out further away from us, which is going to limit the amount of hip flexion while we do this, but get a little bit more of the hamstring muscle activation. Also, again, we can progress to a single leg variation, where now we just lift up the other leg, push the heel into the furniture, and then slowly back down to the ground. Another exercise that we can do to start loading the hamstring and more hip flexion is called the diver. So for this exercise, we're gonna stand on a single leg with a slight bend in the knee, and then reach out in front of us, and then at the same time, lift the back foot up towards the ceiling, and then come back to that original starting position. When we do this, we want all the movement to come at the hip, so we can pretend that there's a rod going through our hips, so that when we do this, we're just rotating at the hip there. In the beginning, it's okay if we're not able to get our chest parallel with the ground. We can go to whatever we feel like is comfortable and then come back and then just gradually go further and further so that we're loading the hamstring in more hip flexion. And then finally progressing into a deadlift. And so to perform the deadlift, what we'll do is we'll be in a standing position and then at the front of our hips here, push our hips back towards the wall behind us, having a slight bend in the knee and then coming back up to the original starting position. This is a little bit different than a squat, which is going to be further down. So again, what we'll do is push our hips back towards the wall behind us, and then up to that original starting position. And then we can add load to the deadlift by first using an exercise band. Everything about the movement will stay the same. So pushing the hips back behind us towards the wall, and then up through that original position, really squeezing the glutes at the top of the movement. And then again, pushing the hips back, and then back up to that original starting position. And then finally progressing to some sort of weight. So we can either use a kettlebell, dumbbells, barbells, or even a backpack, just to load the movement. So that way we're challenging the hamstring to compression at this bottom position, and then coming back up. Hopefully this video on rehab for proximal hamstring tendinopathy was helpful. If it was, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. I'll see you in the next video.